Hi, <clears throat> this is a trailer for The Culture of Addiction. Uh, this is part of a series called Western Spiritual Stupidity. I'm Chris, I'm par part of this prayer group that is on YouTube and on other sites. And um, I usually share my thoughts on lighthearted and serious is issues in our culture. And this is, of course, a very important and fortunately very discussed issue, um, but there is a lot unsaid. There is a lot of metaphysical and spiritual angles that have not been taken to the concept of addiction killing our mindsets, killing our souls, um, taking away everything that is good and pure and just replacing it with garbage. We don't talk much about the culture of death. We don't talk about the culture of addiction. We don't talk about the complete dilution of spirituality. Uh, and I've been railing and ranting about this for a while now. And I will put my playlist in the description. This will be yet another episode of it. And on the thumbnail, you may notice that I took a picture of oxycodone. And why did I do that? Am I, is this to complain about how Oxycontin is just another opioid, even though it's legal, it's very addictive. Uh, not really. Um, it's really to give a glimpse of the fact that I have some experience with this very recently. Um, I had a surgery on my arm, and I was given it for pain relief for my arm. And don't get me wrong, you know, they had to do a pretty long cut on my forearm, so the pain was excruciating after the numb, uh, the, the nerve blockers, excuse me, numbed my arm. And I resolved as part of a commitment to really try to abstain from the pain relievers as much as possible. And I took the least amount as, as I possibly could only if to help me to go to sleep and relax me uh, when I was trying to fall asleep. But I substituted most of that with prayer. And lo and behold, the grace from the prayer, the presence of God, consoled me uh, just as well, uh, if not better in some ways, than the actual drug. Now, I'm not against pain relievers, but I, I am, uh, I understand that there is a crossover in legal and illegal opioids. It's not like there's much of a difference. People that have been involved in both drugs say that there really isn't a difference so essentially it's morphine slash heroin just in a different form in a more measurable capacity so that they try to schedule out the pills so that you don't get too addicted uh, despite them doing that the drug is so powerful when i took it and i felt its effects interestingly enough i definitely saw parallels with my experiences in prayer uh, we do contemplative prayer here, and let me tell you, it's a very transformative thing to be so intimate with God, who surpasses all our understanding. He gives us only point zero 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 zero, he values zero one percent of of what he promises. That's part of our belief, and yet it's still amazing. It just blows us away. It's sometimes even taxing on us. And I, I, I definitely, comparing the two effects, you know, I could see that the rush of dopamine in my brain was, it was definitely a chemical release, but there was definitely a similarity in a sense of warmth, a sense of, uh, you could say, similarity, a pleasure that's similar to a, a like, loving experience or maybe a lot of people refer to it as another Christmas time when you get up in the morning and you're a kid and you have this sudden high because it's Christmas and there's something in the air but in that comparison I realized that our, we're potentially looking at this whole issue the wrong way now I am all for dying to the self and I believe we're heading for some extremely dark times. I, I don't just mean in terms of what's going on in the political world and the societal world. I mean in individuals' lives. We are not going to have... We're already in a pretty bad 
pit of despair with what happened with the lockdowns, people's businesses shutting down. Um, it's just very rough on people. People are very lonely. And it could get worse, unfortunately. We need a renaissance and a complete do-over. The more I meditate, the more I realize this has to happen. We need to strip ourselves of so many assumptions. And, and, and I don't just mean a, a red pill and a half. I mean we need extreme, dramatic reform in how we think about happiness and our meaning in this world and our place in this world. Uh, you could call me a Christian uh, braggart or loony, but I all can we can all look around and see that we're running out of options. And, and I don't like selling my beliefs through desperation. But I can say that the grace of God is so profoundly intense in these times if you reach out to him that it, it really reached a level of something that most people, when they take an opioid, they say there's very little that can match it in the pleasurable feelings it can give you. Well, God's love is greater. Because God's love is greater, not just because He there's a lot of consolation, if you really ask for it, but because He transformed the pain. When I was sober and lifting up the pain in a prayer he consoled me but he didn't take the pain away he transformed it it became sweet and there's many saints who talk about it but the, the best way i can describe it is, is that pain becomes sweeter when you when you when you're being lifted up by something higher than you when you're in a sense of selflessness when you're in this has a purpose this 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 thing that happened to me that's horrible can be transformed into something beautiful. It can cha it can sharpen my character. It can make me stronger. It can make me humbler. It can make me more grateful. It can not even feel that bad because usually the greatest pain is when there's no point to it. When you have no perspective of suffering, when there is no hope beyond suffering, you're only confined to your comforts and the material world. And, and and I mentioned Christmas, and I did do a Christmas broadcast, if you want to check it out, but when we were children, a lot of these highs that we experienced were based on realities, on the reality that we were more open to the simpler things in life, grateful for the beautiful things in life, and that we were more creative, our minds were less polluted with all the junk that we ha have in it today. <clears throat> we were less judgmental and yet at the same time more honest. Uh, we were in wonder of the world, but in wonder of reality. And perhaps instead of looking at it that we need a drug to make us feel a certain way, if we really look at science, we can see clearly that the brain chemicals that are being released are being manipulated by the chemical that you're ingesting, but it is not the actual chemical, chemical excuse me, making you feel better. It's your brain's chemistry being messed with that was already there. The dopamine or the endorphins, the things that in, in the brain that regulate our emotions were already there, and you're forcing it to release. But... Why aren't we asking the question, well, if those chemicals are there, surely there's a reason for that, and why do we not naturally release those chemicals anymore? Well, our society is rubbish. We have lost our sense of happiness and romance and adventure. And let's be real here, you know, we've we become workaholics. we become a, a complete consumers. We are beholden to the material world. Our, our, we have no sense of our own identity often. You know, we, if certain things, if we don't have a good day, if, if we don't have a good job, if 
something goes wrong, if we lose friends or whatever, we think little to nothing of ourselves. We usually retreat into a complete escapism. So we need a complete redo, and that's what I want to share with you. I will, I will add more commentary in my show, 1 p.m. Eastern, this Saturday. And I am going through the same struggles and trials and tribulations. I'm, I'm not speaking as someone who's mastered this. I'm speaking as someone who is journeying in this same journey in self-reflection and self-discovery and prayer and mysticism and spiritual transformation. And I'm clawing and trying my best to claw my way back to the times where times were simpler. Because we have all these political solutions and psychological solutions and all these things that seem to fall flat. Because it just seems like we need a much simpler answer to why we're so miserable. And I think the simpler answer is, is that we just need to detach very much so. We need to draw close to God. We need, to, we need his power to heal us and restore us. And we need to knock it off. We need to knock off this idea that you need your cup of coffee. You need to go to Atlantic City. You need your, your sexual liberation. You need your big car. You need, 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 need. When we're all kidding ourselves. We know that these things can be taken away. We know that these things leave us emptier. And they're just like potato chips. You know, they're unhealthy. They eventually kill us. They just make us want to eat more. Let's, it's time to get real. Please come out to the show. Please hear my warning and my exhortation. Uh, if you are a Christian, I hope you're having a great Lent. If you're not, then I hope that we can meet halfway and you can see some of my reasoning. That's it. Take care. God bless and hope to see you there. And I am praying for you that uh, this message reaches your heart.